Hi guys, we're here at East SETI with uh, Renato Longato. Uh, here we are, I guess, what is uh, today's the 1st of July now, right? 1st of July, Tom, and good and to see you again. Uh, it's great to see you. And uh, you did your presentation this morning, which was fantastic. Thank and, you. And uh, you've got some wonderful ideas. Uh, we've got some speakers here this year that, that are looking towards solutions. And uh, uh, I think what you've got in your book is uh, really pointing some some uh, pointing in a really good direction for people to uh, really take take heed of, and uh, well, maybe we can move forward with this. Well, the, thank you so much. Uh, my book is ET Presence: Role of the USA and New World Visions. It's right here for yeah. you all guys. Check it out. It's in Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Balboa Press, and it's an electronic version as well. So you can support my research all these years. Uh, this is a different perspective of the ET presence and uh, the leading superpower, which is the United States. And many people talk about UFO disclosure, and I think it, won't, it will not happen. Right. Because it goes against the establishment. It yeah. goes against about the structure, the rules, and institution that rules our world right now. And they're already declining, they're already in crisis. Not only the United States, it's a problem is happening in Asia and then in Europe, the center of capital financial system right, in the world. Right. And we have a problem in the Middle East also, it's an ongoing thing that will last a little bit longer, that will affect perhaps the oil consumption. So we need, you know, new energies. We need to understand what is the meaning and the responsibility and perhaps the terms and conditions we, when we engage sooner or later with a sophisticated alien civilization. So in my book, I I mentioned uh, from this perspective that the extraterrestrials are like cosmic anthropologists. Right. And the contactees are a social experiment. <laughs> because you choose a human being, being an extraterrestrial, you give this extraordinary experience, and then you send him back to their, his own reality. He has to digest, go through these changes, and adapt in a society that perhaps the, the don't believe in him. Right. You, depending on your status, social or religion, or well, depending where you're coming from and what part of the planet, is a different social response. But the main thing is that the day after effect, with the next day after an extraordinary experience, whether extraterrestrial or not, you have to deal with reality. Right. And that is when people have these experiences or maybe decided to cancel it because they cannot longer, you know, incorporate it in their life, affect their job, relationships and all other aspects of their life. And that's very important to, to understand what well, we are human beings also. We have a social regular responsibility. In other words, pay our bills. Right, right. Other people become, you know, like I'm a special, I could be a guru and then create a, some sort of cult. Other people like here in the city ranch with James dedicate his life in the pursuit to show that this is a reality. But he also is facing other challenges because it's part of this uh, mm. phenomena that touch our lives and uh, change completely the course of events of in, in our future, in our lives. At the same time, uh, in the United States, is the country where everything started, the, what I mean everything started with the ET presence, is with Kenneth Arnold, right. in 24 of June 1947. Which was right up here. Right up here, very close, which is, is a magnetic place in this area, uh, have the coined the term flying saucer, that later was changed into uh, UFO. <clears throat> then you have in the 50s, the first people who claimed to have contact with extraterrestrials. Look, 60, uh, 70 years ago, with George Adamski, Daniel Frank, Howard Menger, among others. But it happened again in America. It could have not happened in Russia or the former Soviet Union. No free speech, right. no free press. Uh, Europe was devastated. So the only country who was booming after the Second World War who was into the... Uh, 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 going in giant steps into a modern lifestyle like no other country and the benefit of the democratic system was also uh, part of this social experiment. Right. Then you have in the 60s the abductees and this is a curious case that some people already know I guess is when in 1961 Betty and Barney oh, Hill right. were abducted but there was a biracial couple and uh, in the midst of the changes of civil rights movement, it was happening in a year there was a powerful geomagnetic storm. This changed things also. 
And there was a year that Barack Obama was born also from another biracial couple, 50 some years ago, 50 years ago to be exactly. And you have this experience that have to do with a biracial couple when in that time there was, according to the census, 130 million population in America, one every 1500 people were a biracial couple. And so uh, they choose. A right. biracial couple in purpose. Well, there were many white couples, as you know, in order to do that, to broad attention. They were there in TV shows, media, and everything, and it brought the attention of many serious researchers, among them Jacques Vallée, who investigated them. And uh, they have gone through this new challenge for the psychologists and, and psychiatrists, because they had to deal with someone they had not suffered an abduction from another human being, that the police can chase him, that they, um, they can find their tracks or fingerprints or something and find out who abducted this person. Right. This is an abduction from outer space, which you cannot find or persecute or even put in, in, in jail a criminal like that. So this is something yeah. that we have no power or control and it will, it will it could continue over and over again because there is no way that we can control that. So, the discipline of a psychology later on with um, John Mack and others doing regressions, trying to incorporate, you know, these new people that claims to be abducted by aliens is something completely new even for those sciences, those right. disciplines yeah. of the knowledge of, of, of and science. So we have to see the big picture in order to understand how the ET presses work. Exactly, it started to continue also in the 60s when we have these uh, great changes, countercultural revolutions, we have the consumption of drugs, the try, people trying to experience, you know, um, uh, the expansion of consciousness, right. Carlos Castaneda, Timothy Leary, uh, you know, LSD, and the doors of perception written by Aldous Huxley become like a Bible for many people. And, and others, seekers, you have the main uh, representative of different groups from India, like Paramahansi um, uh, Yogananda, who came early, but there was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada from the Hare Krishna movement, mm -hmm. coming on the 60s. So, also was the space race, you know, the cosmonauts, Yuri Gagarin was the first one to orbit, and there was a big fear in the United States in that time that they would conquer the space and the Russians would be leading, you know, the world and all the stuff, the communists, you know. But then we have the man on the moon on the 60s, right. so everything was changing. Now the same sort of conditions are changing also in the new millennium, but it's faster and furious because we have telecommunications and real-time information. People are more informed. The ET president has been accepted since then. So it seems that you find a pattern a, a very carefully choreographed. Exactly. Uh, the, the the seed was planted, and uh, they. I, I, I just see the a distinct pattern of of desensitization, desensitization. Exactly. To uh, to the masses, to the public. On the the with the Diane Fossey when she was working with gorillas in Africa, she tried to habituate, desensitize, and also. And change what you are going to be able to be approached by a human in a gorilla environment, let's say. Mm -hmm. The same way the extraterrestrials are becoming humanologists. They're trying to shape the collective consciousness. They show themselves in different uh, 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 places of the world. In China has been spectacular. They shut down complete airports, big airports. Right. They have big right. airports there. You know, people can see in YouTube and in other places the news of many people, high rank officers, you know, from the military, air force, and all, saying, This is true, I encountered this you know, uh, uh, UFO, high caliber witnesses, you cannot deny their integrity. So, everything is a coordinated, cold agenda, long term, in order to habituate us, you know, to assimilate this new reality and to, in a subtle way, educate us. And as all these um, um, researchers from uh, different parts of the world have, uh, have a conclusion that if there is a serious, uh, coherent uh, communication with an alien uh, civilization, the United States has to take the first step and to lead that group of nations and others as well, scientists, whoever is going to be in charge, in order to educate the people and to 
the, and to accept this reality. The thing is that that is the biggest challenge of the United States in the future. Besides the challenges we're facing right now, we are aware of that, you know, recession and employment is, is the reality. We cannot detach from this, you know, right. it's our life. At the same time, we have an outer yeah, yeah, a presence, an alien presence, the superior them, uh, coming as into merging into our reality slowly and surely because telecommunications, because uh, real-time information, because even TV shows shape the ideas of people believing and accepting this reality. But what will happen exactly if we understand that in, uh, in a specific time, 40s, the 50s, the 60s, then the 70s was the oil problem in the worldwide. We need new energies and we need a new source of energy to leave the planet and to find more natural resources on the solar system because it belongs to us. This is like exactly our front and backyard. We, we cannot continue exploring the never ending, you know, the resources of Mother Earth. We cannot continue uh, overpopulation. We have to solve all these issues at right, the same right. time. So a contact with a superior then could be very beneficial or could be wrong if the lack of vision of our leaders could we go wrong. We are in this crossroad intersection. We are living amazing times. At the same time, we have to understand that a coherent uh, encounter with extraterrestrials will give some responsibility. And the country, which is still the leading superpower, is the United States. So what is the context of uh, uh, contact with a sophisticated alien civilization that can travel in uh, unknown energy and resources to our system and trying to knock the door and find out what's going on with our planet. It seems to me that there is a relationship. It seems to me, I'm not the only one of course who think that way, that they are part of our past and they're looking for what's happened to this less developed planet. They're trying to make this change to be wild teenagers, to be more mature young adults. Right. And in this transition have to do with a shift of consciousness. There you have all these spiritual messages, you know, from all ages, all doctrines and philosophies. There is something that we need to work together, that we need a higher level of dialogue and a higher level of common sense to overcome and tackle these problems. I don't believe that there's going to be a landing on the White House. I don't believe there's going to be an overnight UFO disclosure. Everything's going to be peace and harmony. This is a process. It's a gradual process, right? Yeah, the cosmos doesn't work in abracadabras. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. The cosmos, you know, it, it, it took 13 billion you know, years for the big man to span. It has to be the perfect explosion. It has to be uh, coordinated by some immense intelligence that we cannot even grasp that reality because it comes with the law of physics, with a carbon-friendly universe that can harvest life and right. the most important thing, intelligence. And we are part of it. So therefore, if there are more advanced civilizations, they're monitoring us and saying, how these guys can we can do to help them? We have to understand how to approach them. They approach us and say, look, this is the leading country in this planet. We see the American flag in satellites, in the army, the donor, the production, but we can see from outside with our technology and our different consciousness what's going to happen in the next 10 or 15 years if they continue this. If we are more evolved, we have a moral imperative, right? You right. know, to help them without interrupting their own evolution, to avoid any clash of civilizations and to avoid any psychological dependency yes. because they need to learn that. They have their own identity, they have their own culture, their own value, they can rescue that. So we have to be very careful to accommodate that. In this case, the United States is a superpower. There will not be modern history another superpower like the United States. It will be a multipolar world. In that case, a superpower is not a hyperpower yet. Some people, some sci the, the scientists, the social scientists, you know, the, and sociology thinks that is close to be a hyperpower, but this problem with economy and politics and polarization is, is a declining that we're observing right, right. in you know in the American system. At the same time, 
since it's not a stable hyperpower, what it is what we how we can label extraterrestrial presence. The only term, familiar term, to try to understand this uh, presence is meta power. Meta power. Meta power. A meta power is a civilization and a culture that is uh, uh, rules the airspace, the outer space, the economy, the technology, health, research, and development. It only can be identified as an alien civilization because it is capable to you know, travel great distances beyond mm -hmm. the speed of light or by other methods that we don't know that yet. That means they have something to teach us. <laughs> and Just they have a little a, bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they have an immense power that we don't understand. That's a meta power. The issue with the meta power is that they know how to transform cultures, entire cultures, and also they know the outcome. Let's say, going in a negative example, let's say we are a meta power, we are extraterrestrials, and we decided to invite the Earth. We know that in three years, three months, and three days, we will finish this, this, this project. We will conquer and slave these guys, because we know the outcome. You cannot tell me. You are a less developed... Uh, right. You have to listen to me. But at the same time, if I, have, if I have evolved morally and spiritually, I cannot come with that, uh, with, with that agenda. Because I'm not going to destroy life. I would have destroyed you before. I would have enslaved you before. Not right now. Does it make sense right now? Mm -hmm. I've been monitoring before this, this, uh, your planet, and we know what's going to happen. So we can help you if you want to give up something. Right. So how, how about we give up our <laughs> nuclear weapons, our nuclear power? How about we focus? How about we grow in our consciousness to match our technology? Well, that does it. Could be one of the things that they can request in order you want this free energy. Do you want to explore space? We can help you with this and that. We can help you with the new resources. But you show me your changes. And in exchange, I give you something, right? This is what we call galactic diplomacy and a high level of exopolitics from our perspective, you know. A higher level of exopolitics or a galactic diplomacy or exchange with you know, extraterrestrials. So we need to understand that. We need to understand that sooner or later, the United States have to create a UFO czar. It's in my book. The United States, whether secretly or open to the public, we have to have a team that have to have a, a, some sort of a, a information how to deal with the press, how to react into this case. If the United States, uh, you know, the president, receives information from the Secretary of Defense, Said, Sir, it is confirmed we are receiving signals from this intelligence, these extraterrestrials, and they want to contact us. Who's going to, to turn? Who's going to turn the president? Right. To the National Academy of Science? To the Secretary of State? To the United Nations uh, Secretary General? To Brazil? To Cuba? To what other country? What he can address that uh, on TV? How he can manage it with the politicians and leaders of the world, religious leaders as well. Look, this is happening. It was real all this time. So, at the same time, it's a paradox because the United States is a country who is denying, you know, right. uh, abstract, the stereotype, all uh, had to do with the extraterrestrials. Any, you send all the faxes to the White House, you send all the emails and all the kind of information to trying to release uh, files. It will not work. It's not right, working. Right. Let's get real. It's not going to work. You know? The next day, the president is a politician. Barack Obama is a politician. The next day, he will commit political suicide. Mm. You have to think like a politician. Right, right, right. But it, if it's a big, uh, 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 coherent, uh, uh, overwhelming uh, presence accepted that they are knocking the door and trying to establish a communication, the United States must have someone in charge to say at least this is what we can do right and we have to negotiate in global commons that it's going to be not only beneficial to the united states but to the world right we have to think globally we have to think globally it will demand that uh, right. that approach so it starts to make sense because the, the the more you deny the more you abstract the best for the extraterrestrials right. because you will put in a corner it's going to be a boomerang effect you did not want it to release, now it's too late. You have to accept me no matter what. <laughs> so, what other countries have been, you know, open friendly through their files and, you know, ex 
experiences and information and research like England, like Brazil, mm -hmm. Chile, 22 countries in total, that means governments are facing something that is real. Right. They don't have to know all the answers. We don't know that. But at least I'm telling the people, look, step by step, we know something is going on. We have seen this UFO. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know if they're giving spiritual messages or not. That is not our role. We are informing that we have some files here that have been visited for intelli intelligence. And we, we have never been shut down or killed or kidnapped. Or the people who were abducted, they came, you know, of course, with this trauma uh, to, to go through. But, you know, we never cut a finger or, or an eye or something like that. It's just part of the experiment. Right. You know? So if you see from that perspective, uh, the, there is a reason, there is a reason uh, in, in this long-term agenda that the United States is going to be the leading one. Not to solve this problem, but to tackle it as a superpower to try to resolve the best way when the time uh, comes right. uh, in an unexpected way because uh, extraterrestrials always always do something in a non-logical way yeah <laughs> yeah it doesn't make sense to us <laughs> it at times, does it? So. and that's the way it is uh, yeah. you know because you're expecting from your logical perspective right. that they're going to receive an email and they're going to show up on a tv show i heard that right. story in a tv show that these two extraterrestrials are going to show up and tell the world please yeah please yeah. be less yeah. let's, let's be you know let's be more creative if you want to tell that story you know but the extraterrestrials always, you know, take us out of the box right. in a, a shocking way. Like the way they react, the way we react is the way that they they they, they uh, help us to have a communication with them. So in an unexpected way, maybe a John Doe and someone will have some certain proof, not received through uh, astronauts or to politicians. Someone unknown may show up and say. We have an encounter with this. I have this material. Please check it out. Or it could happen in an unexpected way, through a non-logical response, the way they have been doing all this, this all these years, and we're gonna face a, a, a new challenge. So uh, uh, we also have to understand that uh, uh, there are uh, tectonic shifts we're going mm -hmm. with or without the statistical presence. But if you add that, uh, where we're going right now, facing the tremendous challenge to deal with a new uh, 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 exchange of information with an extraterrestrial civilization, everything changed. Mm -hmm. From now on, history will change. Uh, religious belief will be also changing, become a more flexible perhaps. We have to learn how they made it had they don't destroy themselves. Right. What kind of thing we can do? Perhaps there is something else that we cannot see right now because we're going into this uh, you know, spiritual fatigue. We're living moments of a global a political awakening that are going to be followed by spiritual, a global spiritual awakening. And we see the science everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we don't see is the lack of vision of the, of the politicians worldwide. They are stuck in ideologies. Right. They are thinking, well, I don't have time to think of this. Well, you better think about it and have a rough draft in some way, yeah. some memo, yeah. if the moment arrives. Because you're going to be called and you're going to be responsible you know, to do this. So uh, these are interesting times. And I think that uh, there is a symbolism, a very sacred and secret symbolism incepted uh, since the birthright of the United States for a higher purpose. I don't think that this is just going to be a, a fascist uh, new world order. Right, right. I don't see because people are looking also for new ways to live, new ways to live according to uh, the, um, ecology, a more efficient, compassionate uh, of, uh, societies people who are thinking in the future generations, you know, we have to leave something else for them. And uh, we also have the, the, the right to benefit from the spiritual and material, and material uh, elements in outer space. 
because whether the extraterrestrial exists or not, let's say everything is a hoax, let's say everything is a massive hysteria and hallucination, the moment we're able to access another sort of energy and leave the solar system with a group of astronauts, you know, and find other things, explore other worlds, it will change ourselves. Yes, yes. It will yes. change, even if we are the only intelligent species in the, in the world. It will change ourselves. It will change, you know, cosmology. It will change the genesis from sacred texts. It will change uh, the medicine. It will change astronomy. Surely and slowly, humans will be colonizing the moon or Mars. Sooner or later, we're gonna be outside digging or doing some mining prospects in other in other planets to bring those natural resources here instead of depleting, you know, ours. Right. Uh, this is this is part of our our territory. We deserve that too, you know. So those things we have to take into consideration, and uh, we know. Even Stephen Hawking said, you know, we need to go outer space in the to, for the sake of humanity. He right. said that in his last birthday, in a message right. to right. his last birthday. If he's saying that, it is a powerful reason. We have to understand that. And at the same time, we have to grow as a species. So there is a powerful catalyst and powerful element from a superior outsider that can approach to us and make us think, you know, we have to review our, our vision. We have to review our paradigm. We have to re-educate ourselves, and that is uh, uh, part of the research. And based, you know, a little bit on experience, right, and right. based on research right. that I have done, you know, I don't talk about my experience in this book because it doesn't matter. It's my experience, you know. It changed me, and that's good enough for me. You don't have to believe me. I don't want anybody to believe me. I just want, you know, to offer a new perspective. And in this new perspective of the ET presence, the United States play a significant role, a very important role. And this is the time, you know, that uh, it could happen in the next years, depending how things turn. Right. You right. know, because since we have this uh, nuclear Iran, we have uh, Pakistan, a second class uh, uh, of uh, nuclear power in Pakistan. You have, you know, revolts in the Middle East. You have a financial stress worldwide that is uh, taking people into a cycle of unemployment. And with that stress and with that violence and protest, people demand transparency, honesty from their leaders, you know. It would be a dream if every uh, congressman will publish their tax return on their website. Hmm. It will be, you know, yeah, fantastic, yeah, you yeah. know. So you're attached to big corporations and lobbies and other things. You know, work for the people, and, right, you know, right. by the people, you know. We definitely have a lot of changes happening right now in our, our society. And, uh, you know, the, all, all this turmoil that's going on is good stuff. It, yes. it has to happen and we have to get this stuff out on the table <laughs> or we're never going to move forward into... Uh, we're never going to be able to move forward into our, our uh, cosmic neighborhood. Exactly. So. Exactly. This is this is the we need to go into outer space. Right. You know, we need to find out. For that, we need to uh, solve the problems at home. Right. We need to be self-sufficient in energy. We have to have a better distribution of wealth. Right. We cannot have never-ending unemployment in the world. Right. We have to have a control of birth control somehow. Somewhere. We should not have starving. We should not have a study. Exactly. Uh, certain institutions will have to change. Right. And the people will demand change. Right. And it's happening. The first step of this global awakening is happening right now. And it will continue to happen. And there is a, there is a good report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta uh, that has had to do with uh, geomagnetic storms and the stock market. Mm, really? So, Yes, it's fascinating. <coughs> it's, uh, I'm going to send you a copy. Okay, okay that'd be great. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a document, you know, by the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Is that the federal institution have to study that. So they know there are cycles when you know there are powerful geomagnetic storms, there are social unrest, 
the, the rise of new philosophies, ideologies, or something new start to happen. You know, it seems like there is a connection in the universe, and our our brain waves, right. everything get you know affected some way somehow. If it happened before, we were isolated as countries. Now it could affect the whole <laughs> uh, planet because we are more globalized right. and you know interconnected. So the, they find out that when you have these powerful geomagnetic storms, people start to buy and sell like crazy in the stock market. Hmm. So there are these plunges, or there are these rise of new millionaires, or there are people that are losing money because they be, they start to uh, invest in an erratic way. Right. And that's the time you have to keep keep calm and do your best not to be uh, taking into this uh, moment of 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 of, of uh, as an effect of geomagnetic storm that had to do with the with the stock market that can affect or somehow it change the course of events in a financial system. So everything starts to make sense if you look from the big picture, and if you attach it to that picture, incorporate the behind the curtains, you know, a powerful presence observing us, you know, monitoring us for decades, perhaps for centuries, perhaps for millennia, because they have all the time on the world mm -hmm. to do that, you know, we start to understand that we are, we are getting into an intersection in history, which is a cosmic actual age, a moment of a turning point when culture, uh, uh, belief systems, uh, energy, and uh, the human consciousness are intersecting together and creating something new, perhaps through a social shock, right. perhaps through a big bang. But you know, when the, you know women gave a birth, it's not so pleasant right, <laughs> as right, far as right. we know. <laughs> right, right. But when they're done, I'll tell you what—you have a new child. That's right. Yeah, so. That's right. So we are in that process now, as uh, the birth of a new humanity deserves have the right to continue and to preserve life. Right. And if in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, long path of evolution, we find others um, more developed than us, we have to find out the ways to welcome them right. into our right. reality because right. we cannot avoid that. We can, exactly. You cannot isolate yourself. Exactly. Uh, the most isolated countries in the world are the most who have more problems. Right now, to be uh, independent or isolated, uh, it doesn't work. No. In other words, divorce, well, divorce in this case, from this global community, is not working anymore. Right. But you have to be attached to the world in order for all together to, right. to go, you know, in all together to do this. So, if we, uh, I repeat, if we incorporate the ET presence, which is increasing, which is in having more witnesses, which is also approaching to a certain uh, point in our history that can get more closer and closer, trying to avoid the clash of civilization, trying to scare us, avoiding that fear that we may have, trying to incorporate us into a new reality to have some benefits and to grow. You know, this is, this is going to happen. Right? And I think if in the United States is not ready for it, it will be the greatest challenge in history and the loss of opportunity, a historical moment. Right. What happened to you, America? Right. You have right. all this role and you're missing it. It was all there. It was all, it all there. And it's gone now. And it's gone now. Who's going to be? Russia? Yeah. China? Cuba? Brazil? No. Think about this. Yeah. Think yeah. about this. You know, so there is a moral imperative. And both ways, right. from a meta power, alien civilization meta power, and a superpower, leading superpower on Earth, which is called the Big Brother, whether we like it or not, too. Right. You know, whether we like it or not. And then we have to we have to deal with this reality. How we can educate? We have to make the next step. Right. And the next step it would be a good idea <laughs> if you know, they have some sort of plan how to deal with this. <laughs> Well, Renato, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. And uh, I know Ramon, Ramon, hey, bud, I know you wish you were here. <laughs> hey, Ramon, but, but, uh, <laughs> we miss you, buddy. <laughs> and uh, uh, where can people pick up your book again? Amazon and uh, uh, your you website? Can, it, you can 
go to balboapress.com you type my name Rolando Longaro it will appear there you have an ebook also for a very reasonable uh, price you can go to amazon.com whether you are in the United States or in other country of the world Barnes and Noble also you have the Nook version you have the Kindle version also to be downloaded is it presents role of the USA and new world visions is a result of years of uh, research and a little bit of experience to understand why the subtle relationship with the extraterrestrials and the United States and it could be an ultimate challenge and also could be a greatest opportunity not for America and a greatest legacy for the world as well great all right thank you very much thank you Tom thank you thank you very much that was good